Welcome to the Pink Coral Sand Dunes here in Kanab, Utah. It's near southern Utah. This is a gorgeous, as you can see, dunes that are called coral pink dunes, but they're actually uh, more of a, a, an orange. Matter of fact, take a handful here and you can see they're very uniform in nature. These are, uh, this has been rained out here recently, so it's not flowing as well. But you can see the, the little pieces of sand there. And under a microscope, these actually look clear. And they have a pinkish, well, it's actually orange uh, iron oxide on it. And that came from bacteria. The bacteria came out of the universal flood. As a matter of fact, this is evidence of the universal flood. You can find dunes like this all over the world that demonstrate the universal flood was real. These dunes are nowhere found in the world that they have a source from erosion. That's where modern geology tells us they came from, from erosion. Well, how many mountains are there that are this color? <laughs> there aren't any. And not only that, but the different colors of mountains all have different kinds of minerals. This is pure. These are quartz crystals that have been rounded and they have the orange uh, iron oxide that got onto them from the bacteria. The only way this could have possibly formed was in the universal flood. Uh, there's two sources that we talk about in the hydroplanet model um, and also the universal flood model. Uh, under that chapter in the universal flood we find that the um, sand mark is where you'll find most of this information. What we have is first off the sand can be formed directly out of the water. So you have to imagine if we looked up in the sky and saw an airplane that was five miles high, when you see the commercial airliners going over, it's about 30,000 feet. And that's the amount of water that was on the surface of the earth during the flood. But back to the sand. The sand grew out of the water, it crystallized, and actually minutes, probably didn't even take an hour to grow these sand crystals when you have the right conditions. Otherwise, depending on the pressure, if it was a little less pressure and not quite as hot, it could take um, in the hours. It could take uh, maybe up to a, not a full day, but maybe 12 hours. What happens is when you're under several miles of water and there's about 375 degrees Celsius, uh, that temperature with the right ingredients, and by the way, the ingredients also uh, involve bacteria. Sometimes it, it's acidic, sometimes it's alkaline. And when you have an alkaline sodium hydroxide in the water, this is the same conditions that we use to actually form quartz in our autoclave. And this is all explained in the hydroplanet model. And so out of the water, when the crystals start crystallizing, because there's dissolved silica in the water that came from the heated um, fault lines with all the action going on with the earthquakes. <clears throat> that heated water in a hypertherm caused the crystals to start to crystallize in the water and when that took place and they grew pretty soon they got quite a bit heavier than the water and they fell. And this is where they landed, right out here. That's probably how a lot of these sand dunes were made. The other way that the sand could be formed is in a diatreme, there's pipes underneath the ground, and these are all over the world. The hydro fountains that are discussed in the hydroplanet model and the universal flood chapter uh, go into great detail describing how the in these diatremes and pipes you have the same hyperthermal conditions that quickly uh, form sand. And this is once again in minutes that these sand grains could form. Once they're formed and growing, then they're shot out in the, in the fountain onto the surface like this. And this is how a lot of the uh, different layers we see. Red sandstone, this is orange, and there's light yellow sandstone and pure white that we'll find around the islands. All around the world we find like uh, different kind of islands in Hawaii, around Florida, and there's beaches there in the United States that have perfectly white sand. These are quartz crystals and there's no way that they just eroded from some mountain. There's no clear quartz mountain in the world today. 
So there's no way that we can use modern geology and erosion in millions of years to form these. We've shown already in the hydroplanet uh, model and the universal flood chapter that this flood took place only a couple thousand years ago. And so this is really important that we have an opportunity to show uh, in this short time frame that these all formed.